This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Facial recognition, a machine learning technique used to match our identities to our faces, often relying on government databases or crowdsourced images from social media as training data. With it comes a documented history of inaccuracy when used on the faces of people of color, as well as general concerns about personal privacy. In the past few years, cities have passed local laws banning the use of facial recognition by law enforcement to surveil average citizens, in other words, people like you and me. But until recently, it seemed unlikely that the tech companies developing this software would change their stance on this issue. However, as of June 11, 2020, three major tech companies have restricted or outright banned the use of their facial recognition services by police. On Tuesday, IBM announced via a letter to Congress advocating for racial justice reforms that they would be halting the production of facial recognition technologies indefinitely. The following day, Amazon announced that they would be banning the use of their facial recognition services by police for the next year. And the day after that, Microsoft announced that they would also be banning the use of their facial recognition services by police until Congress passes a national law that regulates these technologies. This pivot comes after monumental efforts over the course of several years from researchers and organizations who are looking to restrict or ban the use of facial recognition technology over bias, misuse, and privacy concerns. In particular, Dr. Joy Bolamwini, Dr. Timnit Gebru, and Dr. Deborah Raj revealed the extent to which many facial recognition systems, including Microsoft's and IBM's, were biased against both women and people of color in their paper Gender Shades, which was published in 2018. The results from this paper led to ongoing research and advocacy against the use of facial recognition technologies by law enforcement on civilians, by the Algorithmic Justice League, which was founded by some of the authors of this paper, as well as by people like Kate Crawford at the ACLU, who we talked to earlier this year in a video that I did on surveillance and AI. In the more immediate term, these announcements seem to have been triggered by the ongoing Black Lives Matter protests, which raised ongoing concerns about how facial recognition technologies may amplify racial profiling by law enforcement especially considering that these systems tend to perform worse on the faces of people of color. So tech companies are banning facial recognition. So what? Well, overall, this is a good thing. It's a sign that the tides might be turning within the tech industry, and in general, I think that these announcements should be commended. In the past, companies that developed these facial recognition systems have been anywhere from indifferent to actively hostile towards researchers analyzing the biases within these models, as well as to those who criticize the moral decision to continue research and development in this area. However, when you take into account that most of these companies, excluding Amazon, don't really make that much money off of these systems, it makes it easier for them to pivot away from facial recognition. But this doesn't mean that facial recognition is over and done. In fact, while these statements represent great progress, there are some major caveats, and these aren't the only companies that develop facial recognition systems. Of the three announcements this week, I would say that Amazon's is probably the most interesting in terms of caveats. Amazon banned police use of their recognition service for a year. And to be clear, recognition doesn't just do facial recognition. It also includes things like content moderation, text detection, object detection, and more. What's interesting is that this moratorium only lasts for a year, and Amazon says that this is to allow Congress enough time to pass some sort of reform that will regulate it. It's unclear where this timeline comes from, as Congress has had a few years to enact legislation that would regulate facial recognition technology, and has made very little progress on this front. Add to this the fact that the United States is currently embroiled in a global pandemic, an economic recession, a period of political unrest, and the 2020 congressional and presidential elections, and it doesn't seem like Congress is going to have a ton of time to do this in the next year. This ban also doesn't limit the use of recognition by other private companies. In fact, you can see from Amazon's official recognition website that companies such as CBS, National Geographic, and the NFL all use this system. This may not be for facial recognition specifically, as we talked about earlier, there are other things that you can use recognition for. In particular, tracking the paths of athletes for in-game and post-game analysis. In the announcement, Amazon also stipulates that recognition can still be used for human trafficking cases, which makes sense. Basically, all in all, I'm not convinced that we're not going to be in the exact same place when it comes to Amazon next year. There's nothing that really limits Amazon from going back to the previous status quo in a year. Microsoft's announcement comes with some similar caveats, as they state that they will not allow police to use their facial recognition systems until Congress passes a strong national law grounded in human rights. What's good about Microsoft's announcement is that it provides a bit of a longer timeline for Congress to pass some sort of regulation for facial recognition technology. On the other hand, a strong national law grounded in human rights could mean a lot of things and isn't particularly specific. Compared to Microsoft and Amazon's announcements, IBM actually seems fairly airtight. The company announced that they would not be producing, selling, or conducting research and development on facial recognition technologies going forward. 
Could they go back on their word? Sure, but based on that letter to Congress, it seems like IBM is leaving facial recognition in the past. So all these announcements are generally good, but it is important to acknowledge that these three companies are not the only ones offering facial recognition technology to law enforcement. As we've discussed extensively in the past, Clearview AI is also offering facial recognition services to law enforcement and are kind of operating under their own rules at the moment. In fact, following Microsoft's announcement on Thursday, Clearview AI released a statement doubling down on their commitment to providing facial recognition services to law enforcement. Another company you might be wondering about is Google. Interestingly, Google's actually been on the right side of this for a while. The company chose not to offer facial recognition services through Google Cloud in the first place. What about Facebook? Well, they were actually fined $550 million earlier this year for misuse of facial recognition technology, so definitely not out of the woods on that one. I should also mention that while Microsoft, IBM, and Amazon either temporarily or permanently divesting from facial recognition services is a good thing, we do still need more research into fairness and bias of machine learning algorithms, including facial recognition, and that can only be done with funding. Specifically, organizations like the Algorithmic Justice League require financial resources in order to have the capacity to audit these algorithms the way that they do. In a Medium article on the topic, Dr. Joy Bomwini asks all tech companies that profit significantly from artificial intelligence to commit at least $1 million towards advancing racial justice in the tech industry. And while no company has taken them up on that pledge specifically, Apple and YouTube have both pledged $100 million towards racial justice initiatives. In short, this week's announcements are good and actually give me a bit of hope about the future of the tech industry, but we're definitely not out of the woods yet. Especially when you consider that facial recognition isn't the only algorithm that has bias and privacy implications. Another example that you might not hear about as much is something like geofencing warrants, which allow law enforcement to pull information from devices within a certain perimeter of a crime scene and then identify the people who own these devices. And where do they get that information? Usually it's by serving a warrant to Google. So if you'd like for me to do a video on non-facial recognition-based privacy and surveillance issues, you can let me know in the comments. In the meantime, if you're looking to learn more about how machine learning models work, you should check out Brilliant's courses on computer science fundamentals, machine learning, and neural networks. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of Brilliant's courses because they help you master concepts by solving fun, challenging problems. Their step-by-step -step guides will take you from basic concepts to a deep understanding of not just how to make a machine learning model that works, but the math behind why it works. And once you finish these courses, you can keep learning every day with their 100-day challenge. I'm currently on day 13. To get started, go to brilliant.com jordan and sign up for free. In fact, the first 200 people that go to that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. I've been really impressed by their courses. They teach you to think like an engineer, letting you make mistakes and then learn from them with detailed explanations, so please check them out. If you like this video and you want to see more videos about surveillance and AI, you can check out this playlist of videos that I did on that topic up here. And if you'd like to see more videos, then you can subscribe to my channel and smash the like button to let me know that you enjoyed this one. Otherwise, if you'd like to follow my day-to-day -day PhD life, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye!